This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hack 5 is the show for which your eyes are feasting upon the glory of the techno lust. Welcome, my name is Darren Kitchen. That works. My name is Shannon Morse. It's your, it's your <laughs> weekly dose of that stuff that I just mentioned. As you are watching this, we are currently at the, the hacker cons of hacker cons, attempting to uh, make Survive. our booth look pretty. Survive? Survive <laughs> the extreme the Vegas heat and sniff all the packets. Hey, come out. If you're, if you're there when we're here with the time warp, like right now, during this week, Check out um, check out our Twitters and whatnot for the information on when we're going to be speaking at the Wireless Village because Yay! Seb and I are launching Wi-Fi Pineapple firmware 1.5. It's going to be epic. Yes! We're launching Pine AP and so reconnaissance exciting. and all sorts of other amazing things. Um, we got some hardware. We got some software. We got some awesome. Other I'm so wear. excited. I can't wait to play with the new software. I'm really yes. excited about this. Oh, wow. I am, um, well, since we're kind of taking it easy this week, I decided to show another alternative to SDR Sharp. So cool. that's what I'm going to be doing in today's episode with my fun little antenna dongle that I carry around in my purse. Hooray. Oh my God. Purse dongles. <laughs> purse dongles. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, why don't we just kind of cut to the action? Let's do it. Peter, last hey. time I saw you, we were building drones! Yes, we were. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? What, what have you been doing since then? Well, I was working on a, a lot of projects, but uh, especially on one. Uh, we actually skimmed over it uh, when uh, we were actually show, uh, shooting the show. So, uh, you, do you remember the Lisa S? Now, the Lisa S is the paparazzi autopilot that we are putting in the pineapple drone? Uh, no, it's the smallest sister of the Lisa M that we are putting oh, in. Sorry, the M is medium, S is small? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, the Lisa S is uh, its smallest sister and it is uh, really, really tiny. Now when you say really, really tiny, uh, how tiny are you talking? Um, like a postage stamp. <laughs> okay, so you made a flight controller the size of a postage stamp, however, it, it, it only uses what, three axis? accelerometers or what and uh, no it's more than that it's like it's a three-axis accelerometer it's a gyroscope three-axis magnetometer magnetometer and uh, also barometer and a GPS so wait a second it's good. It, that sounds like everything that the bigger Lisa M has uh, actually more than the Lisa M the Lisa M still needs an external GPS this guy has everything on board Okay, <laughs> well, wh why make a flight controller that feature-packed and that small? Um, because you want to put it on smaller airframes. That's uh, actually the, uh, the main goal of uh, making it smaller, right? Oh, yeah, I guess. How small is small? Uh, this small? What, what class is that? This is a 12 centimeter, so 120 millimeter class. That's a 120 millimeter class? Yeah, this is... Uh, so this actually is a, a frame that is uh, reused from a toy. And uh, this is the Chinese ladybird, and it it fits on top. And no, I know, I know. I, I fly these little hub sand guys, and they're great. They're fun toys, but they don't have yeah. barometers and GPS and magnetometers. Yeah. So, so this guy, this guy is actually a, a autonomous robot. It's like it can do everything the bigger guys can do. That's so crazy because I've, I've spent hundreds of dollars building big guys because you've got, you know, you got a big flight controller, which means you got to have a big frame because you need big motors, because you need big props, because you need a big battery. Right. And all of this is the same thing that I just described, except miniaturized. Yeah. That's really fantastic. How does it fly? Uh, just like the big guys. It's uh, just smaller and fits in your pocket almost. <laughs> can, can I try this? <laughs> Sure. Okay, here. here. Let's swap. Here you go. Uh, so I take it that this works very just similar to any other paparazzi. Yeah. So uh, down into the right. Black one. Oh, okay. And uh, let me start. Oh it from wow! My... It's like a one let cell me battery. Let from my hand. This is fantastic. Look at that. That is so tiny. So right here, this is the GPS, and I've got some LEDs here for uh, this is the information. GPS lock, so it mm -hmm. got a 3D lock, so it's solid the orange. So wait, wait, wait. This little guy has like a lock. I can do return to home. I can do fixed position. Yes. Yeah, and it has also a ground station. So I can hook this up to the software and actually give it waypoints just like yeah. I would. But that's just so weird because like I'm used to seeing this and thinking like, oh, that's a toy. 
Whoa, okay, what, what is the button? Uh, this is the bind button, so you can bind it to your uh, spectrum transmitter. There we go. So I, I've actually got a professional transmitter, even though this guy is like, I, I'm sorry, I'm still having problems. Like, it's blowing my mind because I'm totally used to little toy quadcopters this size, not professional. You can actually program it to do the thing. Yeah. And it's yeah, the software is completely open source. So, it's also the paparazzi software we are using on the uh, on the Bumblebee. It's the same software. So it should start up and fly just like the Bumblebee that we built yeah that's right okay so down into the right on the remote and then with this is my kill switch uh, the kill switch is on the corner okay cool there you go from your hand all right oh gosh all right so orange is the back oh my gosh whoa it's so responsive yeah it works oh my gosh okay I've never flown this before guys it's and the first time, actually. It's a little windy. Yeah. But uh, this is insane. Okay, so it flies more responsive. Whoops. And kill it. And kill there it. There you go. Okay, well, that's weird because I actually just instinctively held down into the right. <laughs> yeah. Um, huh. <laughs> that flies. Okay. Okay, this, this is just the weirdest thing because I'm just made in this. Um, that flies like the bumblebee, but smaller. And it, I guess I shouldn't be surprised by that because it's the same it's flight the same controller, software. the same software's inside it's of the it. The same hardware, actually. Peter, I'm just amazed that you were able to get that into the size of a postage stamp. Uh, well, it was a lot of work. I, it was not easy. I bet. Okay. Yeah. So one more thing that I, is really, really cool about this guy is the radio, actually. It's like what we did with the radio, we uh, figured out how these guys communicate. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you spectrum can, it's a standard standard transmitter. The spectrum you can get it uh, in your next best uh, hobby shop. Mm -hmm. And what we did, we figured out how it communicates and um, implemented it in the autopilot. So what we were able to do is uh, add telemetry with the standard protocol of paparazzi. So it's like Wait a second. You're actually sending telemetry over the spectrum protocol. Yes. Correct. So not only did you reverse engineer the control link, this is the 2.4 yeah. gigahertz link between the transmitter and the, in this case, a quadcopter, but the aircraft. You're also sending data back over the same channel with telemetry. Yeah. And uh, this is what you use this guy for. Oh, what? So what? This dongle right here, that is fantastic. What What is this dongle doing? So does this replace the 900 megahertz modem that I would have otherwise Correct. used yes. on the, the bigger build that we did? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's You you just need one radio this way. It's We wanted to save more uh, uh, well, you're, weight. You're saving radios, you're sa saving spectrum. You're and you're saving power. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. This is power wise, I mean, this is a really tiny craft i mean look the controller is bigger than it um uh what kind of battery are you using and, and uh, how does the power system so, work so, so the standard kit it's like this is this is how it comes it's uh, with a 250 milliamp uh, hour uh, battery so it flies around like five minutes okay and i've got some 350s for my hub right. stand they're also one cells so yes same so idea? yeah same idea you can extend it to seven to ten minutes uh, yes. by by uh, using a bigger battery that is so amazing because unlike what I'm used to with a toy, I am just still like grokking the fact that you can just pr program in waypoints for this little guy and, and then away it goes. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, exactly the idea. It's like it's it's a research tool. I'm really curious what people will uh, build with that. So that's the really big thing about the Lisa M is as a research tool, you've got a lot of input and output and other stuff that you can use to extend it. Like we were talking about like somebody had written drivers or not drivers, software to allow it to speak to an iridium modem, you know, like why? Well, I don't know. I guess maybe you sent your, your UAV into an area that doesn't have any control signal. That's fantastic. So what kind of extensibility do you have with this as compared to some of the other platforms for paparazzi? Uh, so um, of course, by optimizing the size and weight, you have to uh, compromise a little bit. But we still uh, we still have uh, a UART that is available. We have, of course, PPM channels, so you can use it on other platforms than a quadrocopter. The, the nice thing about this board is that it comes with the uh, driver MOSFETs, so it can drive 
four brushed motors on this tiny frame. But uh, the same uh, uh, pinout, you can use P uh, PWM to run uh, uh, brushless motors if you want that. Uh, you can. So you just need to add your own electronic speed yeah. controllers, but you would actually. So right now, this board will speak to brushed motors without any additional components. Yeah, it's just a drop-in replacement. It's like uh, of the uh, stock uh, uh, toy electronics. And I don't know if we covered this, but the advantage between brushed and brushless motors is uh, efficiency. It's okay. uh, they are they are more efficient, and uh, this way uh, we uh, I. I'm pretty sure we can extend the flight time and still keep the same size, if not smaller. Well, not just that, though. If you're talking, if you're saying that this can speak to an electronic speed controller, there's no reason why it wouldn't be able to speak to a 30 amp uh, ESC on a 550 class quadcopter, not a 120 class. So we're talking about the big boys here, right? Yeah, that's that's a very good point. It's uh, you can use this postage stamp uh, flight controller on a not like a huge uh, UAV too, if you wanted to. Well, why, that's, I'm just, that's so fantastic. Okay, um, and it's paparazzi, so it's open source, and we've covered this ad nauseum, but I just am so surprised at what kind of like, the, just the marvel of the engineering involved in this. I'm I'm so, I'm proud of you, dude. This thank is, you very much. This is ridiculously <laughs> awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay. That's, uh, I, uh, it took a while to get here, but uh, it, I think it was worth it. I hope you guys agree too. Okay, cool. Well, where can uh, you guys find out about uh, the Lisa S? Um, just uh, go to my website, onebitsquared.com, and uh, you will find uh, the shop there. It's like we just released uh, the hardware. It is available now. Uh, and uh, you, you can get it, you can hack it, you can extend it and have and a lot like of fun. A, it's like a kit with all of the stuff you need to build? Yes, this is uh, also a complete kit. It, you c it comes with the frame, it comes with, uh, uh, with the charger, battery, everything. So if everything. I'm a researcher and I want to start building a drone that I can like start hacking on in my office, not having to go outside every time I want to fly, because trust me, I love this 120 class because uh, I, my, my cat must love it as well because I fly all around her and the girlfriend as well. But yeah, this is indoors friendly. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. And uh, people are already working on uh, support for indoor navigation systems so that they can have positioning. So you can you can do it like what uh, the other universities do indoors. You can do that with this platform too. I feel like we're living in a science fiction novel. This is so crazy. Thank you so much. Dude, Peter, as always, I can't wait to continue our drone series. I'm so loving the kinds of crazy stuff that you're coming up with. I can't wait to see you at DEF CON. This is fantastic. Everybody go ahead and check out One Bit Squared. Really appreciate it, dude. Thank you very much. It's, it's, a, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> The computer internet is now available on the broadbands for which you too can have a personal home page. This page can display all sorts of magical information about yourself and your cat. And guess what? When you need that personal home page, you should do what Shannon and I do, which is to head over to domain.com. They have a magical wizard which will show you all of the available domains and let you get your website up and running in no time at all, and you'll realize that it is a super fun place to do business. As we have realized, as we tweet them at domain.com and realize, wow, these people are just crazy enough to do business with us. Not only are they fans of us, they're fans of yours, and that's why they got a coupon code that's gonna save you 15% when you check out at domain.com with coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. We are back and it's time for the trivia question of the week. Now last week's trivia question was, excessive second order harmonics emanating from a 10 meter transmitter are most likely to affect which TV channel? And if you answered that, it was channel two. The second harmonic of 28 megahertz is 56. And this is just above the 6M band and within the proximity of TV channel two. Now this week's trivia question is, what is the name of the command used to add a user to an OS X box or an OS X box? You can answer that over at hak5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. Good luck. 
Even though we're packing up for DEF CON over here, I decided to have a little bit more fun with SDR because, hey, why not? So since we're taking it a little bit easy this week, I decided to do another alternative SDR program uh, that's kind of a comparison to SDR Sharp and HD SDR. So this one is called SDR Radio, and you can find it over at sdrradio.com. I have the website pulled up so you can get an idea of what it looks like, sdr-radio.com. Here you can read all about it, but yeah, it's basically just another alternative. Uh, so we want to download the one that is version two. You can find that over at uh, v2.sdr-radio.com. Just go over to the downloads link and then you'll have a couple of choices. I decided to do the most recent one. This one is the 2.2 release. It just downloads a .exe file. You just let it run and then follow all the on-screen instructions as usual. And then you just download uh, that to install the file. Once you're done with that, there's a couple of DLLs that you need to uh, also download and copy and paste into your folder. These are gonna make your own SDR RTL dongle compatible with SDR radio, the actual software. So those, and I'll put this link in the show notes because it's a little bit weird. This is where we found our DLLs. So this guy decided to go ahead and compile his own version of them to make uh, his dongle run with SDR radio. If you just go down to the bottom, you'll have a couple of links to the, S, uh, the DLLs. So you can download either the January 6th one or the February 9th one. I did the February 9th one, and then I just copied the files over from my download folder. I have 64-bit windows, so I just copied all these, and I put them into my my folder, which was found under program files. So it'll show up as sdrradiopro.com. So yeah, you just copy everything over into that folder, all the DLLs, and then it should be compatible and you should be ready to go. So before you go ahead and file, fire up the program, obviously we need to plug in your dongle, so make sure you plug it into your USB. Uh, also run the Zadig config if you haven't done that already. We did that in the very first SDR uh, radio segment that we did like way back at the beginning of this series. So go ahead and check that out so you can run through it. It's a very simple program and it'll just make sure that uh, you have the correct drivers for on your computer to make sure that this runs correctly off of your USB port. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start up the software so I can show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna minimize these. So this is what it looks like. I just put on my start menu and my desktop because it's easy that way. So when you start it up, it has a whole bunch of crazy stuff on here. It's going to have a nice little pop-up that asks you uh, if you want to add a new radio definition. So you hit yes and then you'll have this nice little menu here. So it'll let you select a radio and the radio that I have is of course my RTL SDR USB. It should be able to find it automatically whenever you have this plugged in since you've run that driver software. So go ahead and choose it and then you want to choose your sample rate. My sample rate down here I have mine set at 2 megahertz. That might be incorrect. I'll have to do a little bit of uh, research on that but that's what I have mine set to. And then you hit start. Now I'm going to turn down the volume on this since we don't really need to listen to the volume for this segment, but basically just choose your sample rate, hit start, and you should be ready to go and you should actually hear some kind of frequency, some kind of information coming out of your speakers. Now there are a couple of settings that we want to go ahead and set up. So you're going to see your spectrum appear and you'll see a nice little waterfall at the bottom. This waterfall is really, really big, so you should see quite a few things happening. And then up here is where you see your spectrum. So you can see what channels are actually receiving any kind of information, what data is going on. I have mine set to the FM radio because, well, it's the easiest one to actually do. So we're going to hit span, and span is found right here. Click on that and set it to the same sample rate that you had set previously. Once you do that, you should hear a little bit more cl uh, clearer frequency than you had previously. Now we want to click on frequency, and frequency is also found on the same panel right here. When you click on that, it's going to open up this big window over on the side. So this is where you can set your frequency, you can change it. It gives you a couple of other general options as well. This is kind of interesting. If you go under general, 
you can click on all these different frequencies to choose what, what channel you want to listen to. If I scroll down, you can see that I'm currently on the 101 to 102 range, uh, right in that section. And I can also verify that by looking up here at the different numbers. Now, of course, you can also change it up here as well. This is the VFO tuning window. Uh, I can just click up or I can click down to go up and down on the frequencies to choose different channels. And then I can click inside of my spectrum to change it, make it a little bit more clear which channel I wanna listen in on. Uh, the VFO tuning box, that'll let you change the frequency. Uh, you can also change the gain settings under the RF icon at the top. That is found up here under options. So this gives you options for your antenna, the RF frequency, I have mine really high, 49.6 dBs, also your radio configuration. So this is where you can find the PPM, the parts per million adjustment. Uh, I have mine set to 40 PPM, so that's what I've been mostly keeping mine at for all of the different uh, software tutorials that I've been running through. You'll also notice that this program doesn't give you as many options as far as changing the look and feel of the program, customizing you know, how pretty your waterfall is or customizing the zoom and things like that. You don't get as many options as you do with HDSDR as far as this goes. But if you want to change what your waterfall looks like, you can do that over here. There's a little icon that looks kind of like a mountain almost. So you click on that and you can change what your actual thing looks like and I can go up and down to heighten or lower the brightness of the different stations that I'm listening to. Oh, I can make it look crazy. So I like to keep it right round in this range for myself. A um, few other little topics that I wanted to mention. You can also look at DSP options. So this is where you'll find interesting things like AGC, noise blanker, uh, you'll find squelch, which will take care of any kind of horrible noises that you hear between people talking. Uh, notch, and then there's noise reductions, which can also help with, um, you know, messing with your own radio if you need to change any of those options. Up here is where you'll find all the different channels that you can listen in on. So I have AM, CW, FM. I'm currently on Wide FM, which is where you'll find all your different radio stations. SSB, under that you'll have LSB, USB, and DSB if you want to listen in on any of those. Below that you'll see a bunch of different kilohertz settings. So I have mine set to 48, and that seems to work pretty well for myself. I'm going to center my station again so I can listen to it. And then I can also choose, if I want to, I can have two different radios installed at the same time. So I can have a VFO A and a VFO B. Now that can be really useful, again, if you've listened to our previous segments about different things that you can do with two different ones. So you can listen to two different stations at the same time that are talking back and forth, if you will. So it can be very, very handy. And the last big thing that I wanted to mention was, you see this little radio frequency in the waterfall below here. This is basically just a zoomed in version up, up above it, so you can get a little bit more defined um, interaction with what's going on on that station. And then next to that is an audio spectrum. So you'll see the VFO tuning where we have our actual numbers, FM stereo, and then audio spectrum. So you can hit play, and you'll get an audio spectrum of what's going on on that station that you might be listening to at the time. Not much happening on this one, but we can play around with it a little bit. There we go. Make it a little bit more clear. So yeah, lots of different options, uh, very customizable. It's definitely a lot more advanced than other options that you have out there for software, but it's there if you want to use it. And some people don't want to use SDR Sharp, so there you go. Check out SDR Radio or over at sdr-radio.com. And make sure that you check out all the different options because it is very hardcore. There's lots to do, but I haven't found any add-ons. And I really like the add-ons that SDR Sharp has, so I might just stick with SDR Sharp. But anyway, stay tuned. We have lots more coming up. And of course, you can send me feedback over at the comments, or you can email us over at feedback at hack5.org. Hello? 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 Oh. oh, hey, it's me. Why am I over here? Oh, I see. I'm coming out of there. Wait, you're still ringing? Sir, please only use one phone at a time. Thank you.
Sorry. I'm using too many phones at a time. What is, oh, it's this. I didn't even realize it. Hello? Hello? Come here, check this out. <laughs> the radiation monitor, option two. Please place the sample near the radiation detector. Then okay, so it says, please place the sample near the radiation detector and then press any keys. So let's go with five. Scanning. It's scanning. 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 It's still scanning. 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 The sample is emitting 3.6 microceivers per hour. Or so says the payphone at Torcamp. Payphone's at Torcamp. Oh, and free candy. <laughs> You, what are you trying to do? You're trying to blow up a network or something? Yeah, what so is a, this? It looks like a, a power supply for a Dell laptop, but on this end is a Ethernet jack. But that's not right, because yeah, that's... It doesn't make no, sense. No, no. Okay, listen, I did, <laughs> I did like 10 years as a system administrator. There's no way I would ever let anyone plug this. I don't know what this does, but there's no way that's going near my network. Yeah, right. Although I must say, if, if you ever look under my desk, it's littered with these and these and yeah, these. And so I, you see this around and you don't pay much attention to it because it kind of just blends in. So the secret's inside here. And if I open this up, you can see oh, there's it, a Raspberry Pi inside. Oh, what's what's going on with the Pi? That's fantastic. I love this case. Yeah, it's so I actually covert. had to desolder it, you know, the S-Video out of there just to fit it into the case. And it just so happened to be I don't in need there. the video anyway. And then here's a USB um, power supply that's just taken apart so it fit. Oh, like like your iPhone charger or something like that. Exactly. That's fantastic. And then um, you know the power cord is the same after that, and got an Ethernet cable on this end. So what does the software do? So basically, I watched some of your uh, Hack Five videos and learned how to do reverse SSH tunneling. Yeah. So whenever I plug this into a network, it does a reverse tunnel back to my server at home. So you always and, have access to that network. Yeah, to do remote tech support, you know. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Remote tech support, and it just so happens to be in such a way that it would very easily just disappear in a network yeah, closet. it sure does. That is fantastic. And I love that it even has, like, the stickers on the back and everything. Yeah, this is truly an HP power supply in a former power. life. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. Have you... Uh, have you posted the script, or you're just... Yeah, basically, so. it's just what... Uh, Yep, everything um, everything I did to make this happen, I put on my blog, which you can find at tunnelsup.com. Tunnelsup.com. Richie, I really appreciate it, man. That's really in, ingenious. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Once again, we'd like to thank you for guys for watching the show and the thing that happened. We made the stuff. We survived. We survived. Go us. You made it to the end. You so deserve lemon mustaches. <gasps> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. It's like a blonde mustache. Don't touch my mustache. Uh, if you want to, you can always check out hakshop.com. That is where you can find all of the Hack 5 goodies that we were selling at DEF CON, as well as everything that you can find online like normal, including okay. t-shirts and fun things. There's nothing normal about the Hack Shop, though. Nope. I'm just throwing <laughs> that out there. Um, <laughs> also, you can follow us, hack5.org slash follow. That's where you would have found out about all of the awesome parties and fun, crazy stuff and shenanigans that are happening with the shenanigan over here at the death of the con. What yes. else do we do? What Is else did it? we do? We, we drank all the booze and hacked all the things. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching. She's Shannon Morris. He's Darren Kitchen. Trust your tech last. Bye. Are you gonna do the show? Are you a mute? What's going no, on? No, I'm just wondering what we do. Hang on, I know how to do this. <laughs> you forgot how to do the show. Bye, y'all! That sounds good. Y'all take care now! <laughs> <laughs>